Hello everybody and welcome. Today I'm gonna unbox the Color Vision Spider 2 Plus. It's a very old color calibration solution. It doesn't support wide gamut to display, it doesn't support OLED, it doesn't support LED, but it runs an older version of macOS and Windows and it supports all the legacy screens I have. So I've decided that this one is the way to go for me to have consistent work results with my work and have my monitors looking more or less the same. It's just a plain box. You can open here and have some explanation how it works, the results that you expect, a comparison between the different versions and yeah it explains how awesome it is. I think the current version is this by the 6 and the company has even been acquired by a different one but well I hope it's going to do the job. On the back you can see that it supports both CRT and LCD displays and it's a portrait of the era. So you have here a PowerBook G4 17 inch, you have an old edition cinema display, I think that's the 22 inch ACD one and some, I think it's a Sony CRT box. You put it here, just slide it out. Open it. What have you got here? Warranty, expired for sure. Quick guide, so you will have the picture of a Sony analog camera. You basically have to take a photo, download it to the computer, and then use the photo to calibrate your printer, your scanner and your screen. You have an installation guide. Yeah, instructions in all languages you can imagine. Then you have CD. It has a serial number, 2007 October. A color is software, I have no idea what it does. Profire Plus, I also don't know what it does. Adobe Photoshop Elements 3.0 and the calibration kit. I own two Lenovo's L220X and according to reviews they should handle up to 92 or 94% Adobe RGB coverage and 100% sRGB coverage. One, the one on the left has been used much more than the one on the right so the colors are really different. Um, let's see how far I'm gonna get with the calibration to get them matching. You can see already on the boot screen that the screens have slightly different color temperature well, I'm not being very fair because we have an angle here, but let's see how it goes now. Yeah, you see the one on the right seems lighter and the one on the left looks like it has deeper blacks, but it's just a difference of gamma that you know, give this different result. I usually, I used to like them more than one on the left because it's a bit warmer, but I found out that one on the right is, as of now, more accurate. I just found out that two of the CDs are broken. I'll check what to do with the seller because you know, I would really like to keep the product. Let's see. So let's get it installed. So the installer seems to be a standard affair. Let's do continue, accept, OS 10.2, that's old. I can install to my boot hard drive. I haven't seen this Vise installer for, for a long time, or in a long time. Right, so the software here is asking me to connect the sensor. If I do spider 2 here, it tells me nothing was detected. So let's get it done. 
Now the sense is connected, I will click Spider 2 and let's see. Alright, it's detected. Recalibration warning 2 weeks, I do OK. Uh, let me move this back. Oh, blah blah, the system help you adjust your monitor, create a custom ICC profile, blah blah blah, tone of response, white balance, gamma, right next. Allow it to warm up for at least one hour. Allow okay calibration. Not sure I want to wait for an hour. There's no direct light. Mm, okay, well, I'm gonna wait for a while. No one hour, half hour should be okay. I'm just here now moving the sleep time of my screens to never. So when I come back they will be still up and warm. I'll leave it here. Alright, I have... Uh, the monitor is warmed up, so let's see. There's no direct light hitting the screen, so let's do next. The CRT or LCD monitor? LCD. I think I would go for 1.8, is the Mac? OS using Gamma 1.8. Let's see, I would remain native. Or maybe. Uh, now we're gonna go for the PC standard. Let's see, next. What's luminance mode? Doesn't say, help doesn't say so. Next. This monitor has brightness and contrast, so let's mark it and next. Let's see, I'm gonna reset the monitor now. I was digging down the menus and I found out the factory store button, so I'll click OK. The reset. Oh, this is bright. Alright. Uh, let's do next. Uh, luminance set factory. I'm not gonna film all of this, this rubbish. I'm filming a game because it's interesting. So here it's asking if I have RGB sliders, Kelvin sliders or presets. My monitor seems to have the RGB sliders and presets, so I'm clicking that, going next. So I'm targeting white point of 6500. So let's see. Software guide me, so next. So, ensure the LCD baffle is connected to the, fitted to the sensor. Uh, yeah, looks like it is. So, click continue and done. Let's hang it. So, like this, apparently, or maybe more to the center, I don't know, so let's leave it like this, click next, reading red samples, I've never done this in my life, this looks pretty cool. Not this nice, it tells me to adjust the monitor controls until until the columns are even. So let's try that. Uh, the controls are hidden behind the that's rubbish, not really what I'm doing. Custom. So after each adjustment, click update to take a new reading. Well, when... Ah, it goes away. That's horrible. So... 
color custom I'll click update let's see what it says it's taking its sweet time I seem to need more red now, but red is on maximum, so let's try again. Red, uh, green, and blue, they are all on the maximum, so not sure if I reduce. I'm not sure I'll be able to increase the blue. Let's see if I reduce red and green, if it that compensates. So red is gonna go to seventy. Green seventy. Push OK, I do save. I exit. Let's update. Oh, that's almost good. Wow. All right. The difference is very low. I will reduce a bit of green. That oh, looks pretty good. Uh, I could maybe now increase green a bit and it would be perfect. So let's try that. Alright, I am only around 30 Kelvin away from the perfect value. There's no difference between the colors, so I think I'm gonna leave it like this. If I try a bit further, I may screw it up. Because there's no way now I can increase the blues, so that's as good as it's gonna get. I click continue reading black point let's see where does this go I think this is gonna go for a while so I'm just Gonna stop recording and come to the conclusion. After long minutes, I think seven or eight, I got the calibration results, and then you can click this button to see how it looked before. So here we have the calibrated image, and if you click on switch, you have the before calibration image. The new one looks warmer, skin tones are better. But I'm super colorblind, so I don't really know if it's good or not. But if I manage to get the two screens matching, they look very different now, it would be fantastic. And this is how different the monitors look like right now. Let me focus this. So this is the calibrated screen, and this is the uncalibrated screen. Let's see if it gets better. The second monitor is an absolute mess. And I'm not, not even sure I'm gonna manage to fix it, but let's try. So after several rounds, I managed to get the monitors to almost match brightness. There's no difference between the colors. And at the end, you're gonna be impressed 
by how different the adjustments are on each monitor. The difference between the monitor on the left and the right is in the number of used hours. I will try to connect them later to my PC to show you the numbers, but one, the one on the left should be already on the 20th or 30,000th hour, and the one on the right has probably two or 3,000 hours. I'll see if I can dig the software later on to do a proper reading. Now that the adjustment is done, I can just go here to continue and it's going to take its sweet time and check all the colors and create a profile. It looks much better now. It's interesting though, one monitor needs 30, 35 and 100 red, green and blue, second one goes on 76, 84 and 100. Thank you for watching, see you next time.